All right, joining me now via Skype to discuss the Malian situation is an international researcher, Sylvain Twati. Sylvain, it's good to have you join us on TVC News at this time. There seem to be, there seem to be much confusion as to the, 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 the meeting between both sides, the military junta and the protesters who, who feel that there has to be an agreement. Uh, why, are we not, why, are they, why is there no headway after all the mediation and consultation at this time? What, what are you seeing? What I'm seeing is um, that uh, there is a lot of confusion between, behind this coup. Um, I think uh, maybe the M5 RFP is feeling that they, they are the one who led to the coup by the protests they've been launching since the 5th of June. Um, but at the same time, when the soldiers did their coup from Katia on the 18th of August, they felt like um, they had other maybe uh, concerns than the one that the F M5 was launching. So there is a common agreement that uh, the IBK and the government couldn't continue to rule in, in, uh, in Mali. And I think that's one of the points that they all agree. But uh, behind that, there were not a clear understanding what will be the future for Mali and from the different participants. Uh, the military agenda is, uh, and the soldiers leading it, wants to be able to have a country where, which can lead um, a security, um, I would say, uh, can increase the security around the full country and they felt that they didn't have the support of the politician over the last few years and the security has been degrading all over the country and I think for the soldiers it's a key element and uh, that is the thing they want to, to, to fight for, it's to have a strong military and government that can uh, control the full country. While on the other side the M5 RFP is more for uh, governmental reform, for uh, the fact that they were not happy with the current politician but they want to be in charge. Uh, and one of the issues within the M5 RFP is you have a, a different uh, factions inside the M5 RFP. You have Marxist uh, uh, parties, you have uh, uh, more religious uh, uh, also leaders uh, around the Imam Diko, and but you also have business people, businessmen who are very frustrated about the uh, recent years of Ibeka policy around the economics. So you have different, uh, I would say, position inside the M5. And also there's a difference uh, with the military since the beginning. And I think there's been a misunderstanding since August 18 about uh, the relationship between the soldiers and the M5 RMC. All right. As it is right now, the ECOWAS has been mediating even before the coup took place and they couldn't reach a perfect agreement situation be be between all the sides, all the disputing sides. How much influence does the ECOWAS have on the issue uh, in Mali, and, and what do you think ECOWAS can do at this time? Um, for sure, I feel like uh, we arrived to the situation because it's not possible uh, to find an agreement among the different uh, Malian uh, factions, which are either the military or the opposition, or even, let's not forget, there was, there was a ruling government that was elected uh, just a few months ago. So uh, I think. Uh, ECOWAS' role is to bring the different actors of the Malian crisis together on the table and uh, try to, to push for, for, for at least a minimum understanding. Um, and right now what we can see is uh, for a long time, as, I mean, until end of August, we thought M5 and, and the military agenda were on the same side about what would be the action plan. And we can see actually there is not so much coordination. And uh, that's where I think the meeting tomorrow could be uh, a milestone first to clearly understand what the military agenda wants because the charter they announced yesterday was not very clear and uh, who is going to lead this transition period of 18 months and uh, is it going to be a civilian or soldiers if it's a civilian will he have a military agenda on top of it at the moment he has not been clearly uh, said by uh, by, by uh, the agenda and uh, also the M5 RFP and all these members uh, wants to understand what will be the role of, of the civilians in this transition. And that has not been uh, done very well uh, and not very well explained to, to any of the actors. So right now there's a lot of confusion. Uh, the last three days of meeting was supposed to bring some consultation and some, uh, I would say, agreement around that. And what we can see is uh, the Malian actors are not, uh, are not uh, agreeing on, on many things together and maybe we hope uh, ECOWAS will help to, to, to bring them back to the table. All right. Now, considering the seeming confusion that, that you talk about right now, where things are not as certain as, as it is, what scenarios do you think can play going forward from here? 
Um, I would say there's a different scenario from, from what we can see from the recent Malian story, uh, that there could be a military junta that remain in power um, and uh, maybe will put one civilian as a front, but will be dictating all the, the action of Mali for the next few years. And I think that's what the M5 is, is really uh, is scared about, is the fact that uh, Mali has a history of a military government uh, for almost 30 years. Uh, so that's one of the fears of some of the, of the M5 and uh, other actually organizations. But that could be an option, actually, that the soldiers don't trust the politician, even from the opposition, and they want to, to basically uh, establish a military rule. That's an option, even if they say no, but uh, if they cannot find anyone to, to come to work with them, uh, they could go in that direction. Uh, the other uh, option, what I can see, is um, another area of protest in the coming weeks, uh, led by the M5 movement, until the Genta decide to, to, to accommodate more civilians inside, inside the government. Mm. And, uh, and that's where we are right now, and to be honest, it can go either side. I mean, uh, right now there's a lot of confusion, even for this coup, we're not really sure how many soldiers are supporting this coup, because again, uh, even if we feel that uh, this coup was led by, uh, by a group of unified uh, soldiers, they, 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 we don't know what the troops in the north and the central of the country, are they really backing this coup? That is a very uh, good question. Hmm. All right, we have to leave you here now. Sylvain Twati, international researcher, thank you for talking to us on TVC. Thank you so much for your time. Right.